today we're talking about the greatest gift and how we should share it with the world. Oh, thanks. Well, hello everyone and welcome to Kamza Connect, your weekly worship service from Cambridge Salvation Army here in the UK. Today we have a great episode lined up for you with great music from our worship band, a great word of personal testimony and some time for the children with Divinia, which will also be great. And we're showing you all these great things to help talk about the greatest gift. We do seem to use that word great an awful lot. Do you not think we ought to find just an alternative word or something? Yeah, great. Okay, well, it's the final Sunday in the season of Epiphany today. And for the last time, we're in the book of 1 Corinthians. Today, we're in chapter 13, known as the love chapter, celebrating God's ultimate gift, his love for us all. So let's get started with a song which reminds us of God's magnificent love, his goodness and his faithfulness. The King of love, my shepherd is. Thanks for that good sing, everybody. Well, our service today is all about love. We don't know about where you are, but here in England, the shops are starting to fill up with pink and red hearts in preparation for Valentine's Day. That's right. And they're beginning to try and persuade us that on the 14th of February, we will need to show someone how much we love them, as well as spend some money on a card, flowers and chocolates, of course. Well, Jesus Christ believed in always showing people how much he loved them, and he asks Christians today to do the same. So that's why we're reading the words of the Apostle Paul, a leader in the early church, who gave advice on the subject of love to some of those early Christians. In a moment, our worship band will help us as we sing a song about the power of God's love. But first, we invite you to come to God in prayer by watching a short video inspired by the love chapter.
thanks for sharing in that song and may God help us each to live in and by the power of his love. Okay, well, coming up shortly will be the weekly update from Norman, the online offering, and Davinia has a story for the children. First, though, we asked one of our congregation members, Muriel, to talk about how God's love has helped her over the years. Here's what she had to say. When Major Martin asked me if I could talk of God's love in my life, I thought, oh, oh dear. But thinking about it, God's love has helped me in many ways. From a child, I was taught to love Jesus, but there came a time in my life when I had to make my own decision to serve um, God. But when asked to do anything in the core, such as perhaps take on a position or something like that, then it got the same response. Oh dear, don't think I can do that. But God had different ideas and he helped me. Times when feeling alone, I would turn to God and ask him to, to help. When Stan was promoted to glory, I found it very difficult, difficult in many, in many ways. But one way was um, I couldn't read my daily readings. The reason being, after Stan had retired, it was something that we did together and I just, just couldn't read it. But there came a time when, again, I turned to the Lord and he was there ready to listen and help me. Whatever situation we find ourselves in, God is always there. And Corrie Ten Boom wrote, there is no pit so deep that God's love is not deeper still. So if you're feeling lonely or in need of help, remember that there's always somebody there to help you to listen. But above all, God is always there for you. God bless. Hello everyone. I do hope that you're enjoying sharing in our worship today. We're grateful to Muriel for sharing how God's love has helped her and we are all encouraged by her testimony. Well, can you believe it? The first month of 2022 has almost gone. So by now, you will have all got used to writing the correct date on letters and documents, I guess. But as the end of the month looms, well, it's tomorrow in fact, I would remind you the link to make donations for our 2021 Christmas presentation, It's Virtually Christmas, which was a fundraiser for our chosen charity, the East Anglian Children's Hospices. This expires tomorrow. So the link is listed in the video description below for the final time. And this is your last opportunity to make a donation should you wish to do so. We're indebted to Lieutenant Colonel Alan Bateman, who regularly produces monthly prayer leaflets for our Corps. Next month's issue is now available and the topic headline is Why Pray? And although it is prepared for the Cambridge Corps Prayer Network, it is available to anyone. And should you wish to receive this electronically, then please contact our officers as noted in the video description below and they will be pleased to send it to you. You may recall that in the past I have mentioned that we have monthly core walks and this year Sue, who you saw on last week's Camsa Connect, has organised this once again. A list of these walks is available to anyone, yes I mean anyone, anyone who wishes to enjoy the beauty of God's world whilst walking and sharing in fellowship with friends. Again, by request to our officers, the scheduled list of walks can be made available. Talking of sharing, there are many of you that take the time to watch Cams that Connect each week. And if you are local enough, then perhaps you might like to join with us for worship every Sunday at 10 a.m. at the barracks. We are planning to continue worshiping here until our building's refurbishment is completed which we, we hope will be towards the end of February, although plans to commence worship there again are dependent upon fitting out time and reinstating stored equipment and the like. We're so very grateful to our viewers who donate using the GIFT app, and last week's donations amounted to £141.25. pence. Let us now give to the Lord once again as we take up the offering.
morning. Look at this beautiful item. As you can probably guess by the way it looks, there is a gift inside. Do any of you like to receive gifts? Of course you do. I can't imagine anyone saying that they don't enjoy receiving a gift. If I were to give you this package, but then ask you to give me five pound, would it be a gift? No. If you have to pay for it or do something in return to receive it, then it isn't a gift, is it? What was the best gift that you ever had? Was it a bike? Or maybe it was an Xbox or PlayStation? Or for some of you, it might have been a remote control car? Or it might have been a favourite stuffed toy? What is the special gift we have received from God? It is the gift of love. This greatest gift is for you and for me. When someone gives you a gift, it is never polite to ask how much it cost. The gift of love costs nothing. We all use the word love every day. We tell our parents we love them. We say we love our pets or the favorite food that we eat. We have different things that help us to show love. But the best gift of love God showed us was his only son, Jesus. Jesus came to earth to die on the cross so that we can show God's love to others. We can show God's love to everyone, to old people and young people, the rich and the poor, by how we act by doing those nice, good things. And it gives us that good, warm feeling inside just like when we receive a gift from someone. And that's what's special about this gift. It doesn't matter where we are or where we go, we can still share this greatest gift of love, which God gave to each one of us. God bless you all. Well, thanks to Vinya for reminding us about God's greatest gift and how important it is that we share the gift with others. Well, it's almost time to dip into the Bible passage for today. And in a moment, we'll remind ourselves how God's great gift of love was shown in his son, Jesus, as we sing, here is love fast as the ocean. Before that, though, with today's Bible reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, here's one of our congregation members, Paul. The reading this morning is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 13. If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy, and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor, and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it does not dishonour others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part, but when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. For now we see only reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope and love. But the greatest of these is love. Amen. Here is love, fast as the ocean, loving kindness as the flood. When the bricks of life are ransom, shed for us his precious blood.
Whenever I get the chance to sit in the living room, especially if I'm on my own and Friends is on, I'll watch Friends. It's funny and it makes me laugh, even though I've seen it over and over. Well, there's one scene where Chandler has decided that he wants to tell his girlfriend Janice that he doesn't want to go out with her anymore. Unfortunately, he's about to do this on Valentine's Day and the conversation goes something like this. There's no way for me to tell you this. At least there's no new way. I don't think this is going to work. And so Janice replies, that's fine. Don't you know it yet? You love me, Chandler Bing. Oh no, I don't. You seek me out. Something deep in your soul calls out to me like a foghorn. Janice, Janice, you want me, you need me, you can't live without me. And you know it. You just don't know you know it. So my question is this. How do you know you're loved? Is it enough to say, I love you? Or should action go along with the words? Well, let's take a look then at this chapter of 1 Corinthians 13. It's called the love chapter and it's read at weddings. And really, I could just read it to you again and just leave it there because it's quite simple and it's profound and really does not need much of an explanation. However, it answers that question for us of whether or not the words, I love you, are enough. You see, the people at Corinth were having difficulty with one another. She's got a better gift than me. I wish I could be like him. And Paul says, hold on a minute. It doesn't matter who can do what. What matters is love. And it's not just any kind of love, it's agape love, which is faithfulness, commitment and an act of will. In other words, it's unconcerned with the self and concerned with the greatest good of another. And this kind of love is so important that it's mentioned 200 times in the New Testament. Now, you'll be glad to know that we're not going to look at all 200 verses. However, there is one example we are going to look at, and it's simply this, and I'm reading from the Passion Translation. For here is the way God loved the world. He gave his only unique son as a gift. So now everyone who believes in him will never perish, but experience everlasting life. Remember, I said that agape love was faithfulness, commitment, and an act of will. Jesus came, gave up heaven to come to earth. That's commitment. He stayed true to his purpose, even though he was rejected, betrayed, beaten. That's faithfulness. And in the purest act of will ever, he stretched out his hands on the cross and became the greatest gift ever. That's what agape love is. Unconcerned with self and concerned with the greatest good of another. It's completely unconditional. God never says to you and me, I love you, but, oh, I'm sure there are things that he would like to challenge us on, but they are not conditional on his love. He just loves. Just think about it. He was turned away from his own hometown. He was constantly fending off questions from the religious leaders trying to trip him up. His disciples around him were sometimes not with the picture. His own people called for him to be handed over to the Romans and then he was betrayed by two of his disciples before he was crucified. No, he loved so much. He willingly turned his face to what he knew would mean his death for you and for me. The love chapter, as 1 Corinthians 13 is called, is about you and me loving with that faithful, committed, act of will love that we see exampled in Jesus. And if I can't example that love, the greatest gift given to you and me, well, here's three things that Paul says about that. I would be nothing more than a clanging symbol. I am nothing. I would gain nothing of value. So I could do all manner of great things, but if I don't do them with love, it's worth nothing. So here's that question again then. Are the words, I love you, enough? And the answer, of course, is no. There has to be action. God's agape love was shown to you and me by giving us Jesus. And Jesus showed agape love by dying for us, the greatest gift. Well, the greatest gift that you and me could give to someone else is to show them love as described in Corinthians, faithful, committed, an act of will love. 
There are three things Paul says that remain, faith, hope and love, yet love surpasses them all. So above all else, let love be the beautiful prize for which you run. Please join us in a short prayer. Father God, thank you for your great gift of love, reaching us, whoever we are, surrounding us, wherever we may be. We thank you for your love that never ends. We thank you that in Jesus, you showed your love to humanity. Help us all to share your great gift of love with the world. Amen. And amen. Well, thanks for joining us this week, everyone. And thanks to the amazing members of the Cambridge Salvation Army family who help us with contributions each week. Thanks, guys. We'll be back next week when we'll be beginning a walk through Luke's Gospel by celebrating God's goodness. We love music from the fabulous Kamza Connect Sings Group and a vocal solo too. Excellent stuff. So don't forget to like this video if you did, subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook for all the latest news. All right then. Well, to bring our worship to a close, we'll sing one of the great hymns of the church, which speaks of the power of God's love to transform the world. So until next time, keep safe, keep well. And keep connected. God, God bless, bless you. you.